there are three levels of relationships or you may call them three kinds of relationships that everyone on earth would require so guys, to, to succeed to channel, and, and to excel there are please, please, please click on the like three kinds and three levels of relationships number one there are general relationships please say after me general relationships one more time say general relationships so the first kind and the first level of relationships is called general relationships for as long as you are alive you will interact with people in your environment you go to the shop or a mall to buy something for the five minutes or ten minutes you are there you will interact with people you could find someone buying the same item you could laugh crack a joke or two and never see the person in your life again if you board an uber or a bolt or a bus within the time the distance of your journey you can have interactions with the person driving you or maybe the bus conductor or maybe a flight you are traveling somewhere within the 50 minutes 45 minutes even if it's 10 13 hours no matter how long within that time you can have a chance to talk with people generally there there is no definite commitment to those relationships it is the lowest level of relationships general relationships but can i tell you the truth every relationship no matter how great starts from there that means if you are ineffective in managing your general relationships it will not be able to graduate to the others that i'll be showing you the key to maintaining and managing general relationships is friendliness and honor write it down please the key to managing and maintaining general relationships is friendliness and honor in fact i may want to add discernment because there are times that the greatest gifts in your life will come in forms that you may not easily accept so in addition to friendliness in addition to a the heart that communicates honor to all men you will also add discernment is someone learning already general relationships now watch this come my friend let me use this man for an example let's assume this man maybe he doesn't know who i am doesn't know anything about me we can be passing somewhere and this this gentleman can see me and just say good afternoon sir not knowing that god has called me and mandated me to help him maybe not even knowing that i have a relationship with his parents but just that act of honor and courtesy i can look at him and say my friend where are you from and begin to find out about him you see that now imagine that this gentleman is looking for admission say for instance in the university and not knowing that i'm the jam registrar for instance or i'm the closest friend to the jam registrar his dishonor to me and not being friendly and just looks at me and pushes me i can leave him in peace and then one day they drag him into a jam center and say we are looking for help and i remember people forget what you tell them but they will not forget how you made them feel they will remember that this gentleman treated me bad and you can recycle needless years of pain is someone learning thank you general relationships you must learn how to be friendly to be friendly does not mean to be a clown laughing up and down it means to have a warm personality a personality that is always receptive and then to be able to show people honor those who understand honor are never stranded in life and then to discern because most times answers to prayer comes when men come god answers prayer not only by sending power he answers prayer by sending men so while you are praying take note of the man who comes in answer to your prayer your prayer the answer to your prayer could be in a man 
In fact, I teach it this way. That all blessings come from God through men to men. Nothing comes directly from God to a man. There must be a man midwifing what leaves heaven and arrives the earth. General relationships. Number two. The second level and the second kind of relationships are called seasonal relationships. Please write it down. Most believers are ignorant of this level and this kind of relationship. Seasonal relationships. Now, please look up. These are relationships from the name. They are relationships in your life that are not meant to be destiny relationships. They are there for a season, a time, and a purpose. That means these relationships are time tagged. You have to maximize the blessing and the benefit that comes from them within the time allotted. Because once the time elapses, elapses, whatever you did not get, you may lose forever. Seasonal relationships. I'll give you an example. Your classmate. I'll give you an example. Your schoolmate. There are relationships whose lifespan can be two years, three years, five years, seven years, and you may never see them again. There are some of you, for instance, shortly after school or shortly after your time in Nigeria, you may relocate and go abroad and certain relationships that you now enjoy, you may never have the opportunity to have and enjoy them again. But the lessons, the wisdom, the benefits and the advantages from those relationships, you can discern and receive them most people do not understand seasonal relationships now let me tell you something with seasonal relationships the advantage and the benefit from seasonal relationships only remain within the lifetime of that relationship you must have the courage to know when seasonal relationships have come to an end because if you do not understand when seasonal relationships come to an end, what once bless you can also cost you. Listen carefully and learn. Many people do not know when seasonal relationships come to an end. And they continue to force it to work to their detriment. You have to know when seasonal relationships in your life and destiny come to an end. Hallelujah. This is very powerful. I remember many years ago, there was this gentleman, for some reason, I live quite a very busy life, honestly, but for some reason, I saw the text of this gentleman and he showed to be a very sincere person. And I reached out to him. And when I reached out to him, he cried that he, this was his background and, you know, he wanted to learn to know the things of God, he was simply looking for a chance to live a meaningful life. And I said, I can't commit to this gentleman. I don't even have the time. But I made up my mind. I said, even if it's two weeks, let me give this gentleman dedicated attention and see what I can do to contribute to his destiny. And I would give him assignments, scriptures to read. Give him certain, sometimes I would call him, you know, or when he calls me, I will cut when I'm back maybe from a meeting or sometime, I'm even praying or studying and here is his call, you know. I just felt this was an honorable gentleman, very respectful as he sounded and he was surprised because I would call him sometimes for over 30 minutes. Can you imagine? And talk with him, share, get, tell him to get a pen and a paper, make reference to materials to help him. In fact, I remember a few times when I even made transfers to him and I said, gentlemen, go and buy books with this. Make sure you, and he was surprised. Sometimes he would send a text and say, God, what have I done? And I taught him something. I said, my friend, let me tell you something. In as much as I love you, don't you think it will continue this way? Maximize every day and every moment that you will have. Hallelujah. Yes. 
and one time the gentleman started calling calling ringing i remember i returned from a meeting i told him to follow everywhere i am meeting and listen to the messages it's part of the mentorship system and one time i remember i was preaching somewhere i didn't save his number but i could see the, the digits and he kept calling while i was on stage he clearly was not following the meeting calling calling and disturbing and writing have i offended you what is this now i thought you are going to help i said oh the seasons you have let me tell you one of the ways you know seasons have come to an end the blessing that maintained it lives that blessing the listen this is a powerful revelation the blessing that is in it lifts not because you are bad but it is a way of making you know when a baby is in the womb of his mother after nine months the same pregnancy that the woman would dance and be happy about she becomes dissatisfied and even the baby lets her know i'm tired of this place correct the baby now begins to engineer all kinds of skills to force her to tell her madam you have to get me out of this place and let me tell you whether it is by normal delivery or cs that baby will come out for sure now hear me never try to resurrect what god is the one killing this is the mistake that many believers make can i tell you this when a tree is dying you can water it to come back to life but when it is dead there is nothing you can do for it to come back to life be careful lest the people who were in your seasonal relationships keep putting pressure on you remember we we're primary school classmates and they keep inconveniencing you crying for a space in your destiny and you keep feeling guilty no you don't have to be evil that relationship was for a season now that the season has ended you must know when to move forward can i tell you this the bible teaches us this seasonal relationships in the journey of abraham please listen carefully the bible says when abraham left he went to go and sacrifice isaac when you read from genesis 22 he went with his servants they started the journey together but when he got to the base of the mountain he turned to them and said gentlemen you have tried for me from here it is only me and my sacrifice that will go upwards did they do wrong they don't have to do wrong he's just saying your season the validity of your contribution has come to an end can i tell you this there are things god will not do with you till you allow relationships that have ended to end indeed there are certain things god cannot do with you and in your life now let me tell you this because of the emotional nature of humans it is usually very difficult is the reason why many young men cannot leave home when they are supposed to leave home that doesn't mean you stop relating with your parents but you have come of age if you don't leave home you can never be established even if it is one room pack out and go to that one room and start so that you can have a testimony that you will give your children that like my father, I also know God is faithful. I started with a recharge card and a mattress. Look what God has done now. Many people cannot experience more of God because they hold on to seasons that have come to an end. Is someone learning? Seasonal relationships. In Nigeria, there are songs that came in certain seasons and everybody sang those songs including you remember how many times you listen to those songs they look like you will never listen to any song again but after a while to your shock you will even hear the song in your car and flip to the next song not because the song is wrong the anointing that came with it with that season has served its purpose every man of god and every champion on earth 
with respect to destiny our voyage on earth here is a seasonal relationship because one day whether you like it or not like i said yesterday prepared or not your season will come to an end how many of you remember any name called reinhard bonke wave your hands how many of you remember any name called billy graham wave your hands how many of you remember any name called tl osborne wave your hands how many of you remember any name called sir isaac newton wave your hands question where are they today how many of you remember any name in the bible called peter paul silas you would think that these people their seasons would not end because of the high level impact if christ tarries after 100 years say for instance he will not wait that long i assure you he's coming soon i can assure you this by the authority of scripture we are not going to wait that long before he comes but then say for instance the earth remains for the next 150 years do you know if we don't give birth to anybody again after 150 years even the baby today may be gone the whole earth will be empty because every one season would have come to end remember when you farmed last year you were happy when you saw the maize growing and the way you pampered the maize the maize um, you know the, the the stock it was as if it would live forever and all that pampering was just for four months the day you were harvesting it you did not even pity what you once pampered you removed the corn and matched everything and that was it ready for another planting season you must understand seasons the key to maximizing seasons even seasonal relationships is to discern and to take advantage of the blessing and the benefit listen look up let me teach you something there are some of you who grew up with aunties and grew up with uncles some of you grew up in families that may not have treated you well some of you are even working jobs you don't like and you are wondering why god put you there realize that you are there for a season instead of complaining the stopwatch is, is, is counting down you may be there with your auntie and your uncle staying with them they may not have treated you well but god is using that season to build stamina in you so that you can survive any other thing in the future instead of complaining and getting angry discern the season because one day what you are running away from today you will miss it when the season passes i would always give this example have you seen little children who want to be adults by force you come back and you find them trying to act like mommy they will carry mommy's cloth and wear and it's flowing as if they are an angel and they are happy sometimes they try to do what daddy is doing and may god not help you that your child finds a car key and goes to open the car and his leg is struggling to touch everything and he's just doing whatever he can do because he thinks the seasons are too slow he will wake up and find out that he's 50 years old and miss those days and wish he could go back an example of what i'm talking about is you who would believe that you have come this far i had the privilege to see um, one of my dear people who trained me growing up and my goodness he was an old man i saw one of my pictures one time and i couldn't believe it i said this is a joke you mean i've grown like this where am i running to <laughs> but what you do with seasons is what determines whether you will go far or you will remain where you are is god teaching someone now so a quick recap that there are three levels and three kinds of relationships number one is what general relationships your interaction with your environment every day number two 
seasonal relationships number three the highest level of relationship and this is the one that lasts throughout the lifetime of your destiny they are called destiny or covenant relationships please write it down destiny or covenant relationships hmm. what are these relationships they are relationships that have a role to play in your life all through your lifetime for as long as you are alive those relationships should remain and these are the relationships that you should pay any price under god to maintain because something about the overall picture of your destiny is connected to those relationships is god speaking to someone an example of destiny relationships is your prophetic connection an example of destiny relationships your relationship with your parents an example of destiny relationships your relationship with your spouse your relationship with your children and then your relationship with strategic friends connections mentors that God brings to your life war betides a man who does not invest in destiny relationships you may never be able to actualize destiny I want to say something respectfully speaking when you see people in old age isolated frustrated with no help whatsoever some of them will give excuses like i didn't have the opportunity to go to school i'm sorry but i disagree it does not take education to invest in relationships it takes honor discernment and humility how can god give you a gift of 40 years 30 years 50 years and there is nobody on earth who found you relevant enough to connect with you for destiny you must be a dangerous person then someone somewhere should like you enough and be willing to say i believe in you and i see you an advantage to my life this place is quiet I'm sure God is speaking to you now because some of you are about to destroy destiny relationships some of you that classmate you met is not just a classmate there is something connected to destiny for some of you this ministry that God brought you is not just an option just because you are it is destiny connection now let me show you what happens when we do not discern destiny relationships are you ready genesis 13 let's continue from where we left off we'll start from verse 7 remember the story god called abraham and lot went with him god prospered abraham and god prospered lot who went with him but something started happening pay attention to my message now the spirit of god is speaking there was a strife between the headmen of abraham of adam's cattle of abraham's cattle and the headmen of lord's cattle can you imagine both the one who carried the promise and the covenant and the one who followed became so blessed but with every blessing and with every lifting there are always issues The Bible says, and the Canaanite and the Perizzite dwelt in the land. Next verse. Verse 8 says, and Abraham said to Lot, let there be no strife. Please follow carefully. I pray thee between me and thee. He said, I'm between my herdsmen and thy herdsmen. Why? For we be brethren. Verse 9. He said, it's not the whole land before thee separate yourself ah now there is a problem you know what abraham was telling lot it seems like now you don't even know why god blessed you because you followed me you partook of the grace upon my life now you have increased and you did not mentor and train your people 
to know why God blessed them. That it was a destiny connection that brought the blessing. Let there be no strife. Go. He said, separate yourself. You never allow this to happen over destiny relationships. This may happen for general relationships. This may happen for seasonal relationships. But when it has to do with destiny relationships, swallow your pride. Because we are about to learn a lesson from Lot now. Are you ready? Please give it to us. Separate yourself, Abraham told Lot. I pray thee from me. If thou wilt take the left hand, I will go to the right. Or if thou wilt depart to the right, I will take the left. Abraham was telling him, it does not matter the location. What is on me will sort me out. But you choose any direction and go. Now watch the foolishness of Lot. Which is the foolishness of many people on earth today. God has brought you to this camp to give you wisdom for destiny. The Bible says, And Lot lifted his eyes and beheld all the plain of Jordan that it was well watered where before the Lord destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah. Even as the garden of the Lord, like the garden of Eden, as thou comest unto Zohar. Hey. Then Lord shows him all the plain of Jordan. And Lord journeyed east. And they separated themselves. One from the other. Now follow carefully. Abraham dwelt in the land of Canaan. Where did Lord go to help me? Lord dwelt in the city of the plain. And pitched his tent towards Sodom. This is what separation from destiny relationships can bring. The first decision that Lord will be taking outside of that relationship landed him in Sodom. Can I tell you this? There are relationships God brought you to. Because he knows that if you take certain decisions without those relationships... What happened to your father will still happen to you. God brought you to certain relationships as a covenant binding so that you can be a partaker of certain blessings that are on men. This is true. Lot went unfortunately to Sodom. Question. By the time Abraham came to rescue Lot, where did he find Lot? He did not find him at the gate of Sodom. Lot had moved in, moved in, and he was at the center of Sodom. Even though he remained a righteous man, but there was still trouble. Because if you are righteous and your environment is polluted, you will still suffer it. Is someone learning? God connected you to a friend. That friend was the one who helps you pray. That friend was the one who helps you fast. Every time you are backsliding, God will show that friend in a dream. And you say, my brother, I had this dream. I just noticed that. Is, is there something wrong with your spiritual life? Let me tell you what Satan does to people when he wants to destroy them. Please look up and learn. The first thing Satan does when he wants to attack your destiny is to look for everybody who can help you when you are down. He will create trouble between you and them. So that all of them will leave you. When you are alone in pride, he will now attack you. Because anybody who can help you, there is no peace between you for the rescue. This is how people die and this is how people are destroyed. Satan will never attack you when he knows you are surrounded by destiny relationships. The first thing he will do is to surround you with wrong people. Or take away good people from your life. Lot would have said, Abraham, I know there is strife between my people and your people. Please let me talk to them. I can't let you go. Because I remember what I was and where I was before God brought me to you. I believe it's a destiny connection. My apologies. Let me work on it. Only God knows what else would have learned about Lot.
destiny relationships. There are doors today that have been opened in my life, to my life as a person and in ministry because of destiny, strategic destiny relationships. And by the privilege of God's grace, God has used me through destiny connections to also open doors for others. Many of you here respectfully are about to get crash your life because you don't have value for anybody. You have a narrative in your life. I don't need anybody. To hell with you, you can go. Be careful who you are driving away from your life. You may drive one man that is equal to the next 10 years of your peace. Go and find out what happened to the disciples when they ran away from Jesus. Jesus is not the kind of person you run away from. But they ran away. And within 72 hours, their whole life scattered. Peter that was gaining relevance. In 72 hours, Peter went back to fishing and was wasting his time there. When Jesus came in John 21, he said, little children, have you any catch? He didn't even know it was Jesus. He said, cast your net to the right side. When he casted his net, as soon as Jesus returned to his life, in one statement, he caught fish that he had been struggling and he did not catch. Is someone learning? Before I continue, please lay your hand on your head and say, Lord, give me the discernment to know the relationships that my destiny depend on. Lay your hands on your head and pray. Grant me that grace so that I don't use foolishness or pride or lack of discernment and destroy valuable relationships that can hold the key to many, 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 many chapters of my life. hallelujah hallelujah now very quickly i'll read a scripture and i will show you how to maintain destiny relationships and will be done genesis 21 For someone when your life changes and people ask you, you will tell them, I came for this student congress and I found something. I found a key. Hallelujah. Now, for sake of time, I will save you a lot of details. Genesis 21. Let's start from verse 8. This was a story between Abraham and his wife Sarah and a maid called Hagar, the mother of Ishmael. Please follow very carefully. Let's start from verse 8. Now speaking about, remember when Sarah could not bear a child. Are we together now? Abraham now had a child with Hagar and the Bible says something. That Hagar was Sarah's maid. But the moment she had a child, and she saw that she was now in a position of advantage. Something began to happen. She started mocking and acting funny towards Sarah. And in anger, Sarah banished her and said, Go. Abraham said, You can do with her whatever you want. So this is a story you are about to learn. Verse 8, very quickly. And the child grew and was weaned. And Abraham made a feast the same day that Isaac was weaned. Uh -huh. And Sarah saw... The son of Hagar, the Egyptian, now God had given her her own, which was born unto Abraham. He said, wherefore, she said unto Abraham, verse 10, cast out this born woman and her son, for the son of the born woman shall not be heir with my son, even with Isaac, verse 11. And the thing was very grievous in Abraham's sight because of his son. Now watch this. 
And God said to Abraham, let not it be grievous in your sight because of the lad and because of the born woman. In all that Sarah had said unto thee, hearken to her voice, for Isaac shall be thy seed, shall thy seed be called. For in Isaac shall thy seed be called. He says, and also the son of the born woman, I will make a nation because he is thy seed. And Abraham rose up early in the morning. Watch this now. And took bread and a bottle of water and gave it unto Hagar, putting it on her shoulder and the child. Uh -huh, and sent her away. And she departed and did what? Wandered in the wilderness. She came to that house as a maid. By reason of all that happened, regardless what happened, God lifted her and sorted her. Now she separated and wandered around the wilderness, even to Beersheba. Next verse. The Bible says, And when the water was spent in the bottle, and she cast the child under one of the shrubs, uh -huh, and she went and sat her down over against him a good way off, as it were a bow shot, for she said, let me not see the death of the child. And she sat over against him and lift up her voice and wept. Now the lesson begins. And God heard the voice of the lad and the angel of God called to Hagar out of heaven and said, what ailed thee, Hagar? Fear not, for God has heard the voice of the lad where he is now watch this he said arise lift up the lad and hold him in thy hand for i will make him a great nation verse 19 and god opened her eyes and she saw a well of water and she went and filled the bottle with water and gave the lad drink next verse and the bible says and god was with the lad and he grew and dwelt in the wilderness and he became an archer and he dwelt in all of that and all of that now when you read that scripture let me tell you what i'm trying to pull out the bible said something very instructive that both hagar and the baby two of them were crying but the bible says when god had he had only the voice of the baby the bible never said he had the voice of sarah of um, hagar how come she was crying and the baby was crying and only the voice of one child went to heaven you know why because even though she was in rebellion she had left her maid that baby that came out of her was still connected to that blessing by covenant and because of that covenant god could not deny the child even though the mother of the child was in rebellion he cried she cried god only had the voice of one child notice god did not even say anything to solve her problem why are you crying hold the child i want to speak about the child and that's it how can i be crying and a baby is crying and god hears the, the cry of the child and comes and acts as if i'm not there gave her water and now focus on speaking about the child because he was connected to Abraham this is very powerful write this down please how to build lasting destiny relationships I'll only give you two keys how do I build lasting destiny relationships number one I wrote here usually God uses the various phases and stages of your life. He uses geographic locations. He uses church and other occasions to connect you to these relationships. That means destiny relationships happen in our lives primarily by taking advantage of the phases and the stages in your life. For instance, school now. Within that three, four, five, six year period of school, 
there are certain people that God will bring in your life and among them there will be destiny relationships God can also use your geographic location where you are domiciled God can use your church like many of you now there was no other way you would have met and known yourselves but for this platform God can also use other occasions and connect you to these relationships now let me tell you this when you want to build destiny relationships I wrote here you must be driven you must all be driven by similar foundational values about God and about life it's impossible to build strategic destiny relationships until you are driven by similar values about God and about life the Bible says in Amos chapter 3 and verse 3 can two walk together except they be agreed the word agreed there means compatible similar in the foundational understandings that they have you cannot join yourself to people who do not have you don't agree as far as foundational values are concerned you may define other areas but not about god and not about life is someone learning that means before you know who is what being a destiny connection to you you must have values that govern your life values about god when people are lawless and they don't live by values they don't even know who is what their life or who is not what it you will open up your heart the bible says a man who does not have control over his spirit is like a city that is without walls a city without walls is one that is open for anyone armed robbers animals whatever they just flood into your life let me wrap up this teaching quickly by giving you six keys to help you maintain there's a difference between building and maintaining for building destiny relationships you must have foundational values and ensure that those who come into your life have consistent or similar values as touching the things of god and touching the matters of life and destiny and then i told you that god uses the various faces and stages of our lives alongside our geographic location and any other occasion to bring these people to our lives but now the most important lesson i want you to get in this session is how to maintain destiny relationships we are going to learn from the mistake of lot learn from the mistake of hagar learn from the mistake of the early apostles before they were reconnected back to jesus otherwise they would never be apostles in the first place six lessons are you ready how to maintain destiny relationships and connections number one rise above competitive jealousy you want to maintain destiny relationships you must make sure the success of the other party does not threaten you rise above competitive jealousy i'll give you two scriptures very quickly proverbs 14 30 sorry i'm going to be rushing so that we can finish on time proverbs 14 verse 30 and then proverbs 27 and verse 4 proverbs 14 30 says a sound heart is the tree of life but envy is the rottenness of the bones proverbs 27 and verse 4 27 and verse 4 proverbs proverbs 24 please help us media okay just write it down for sake of time so that um write it down you can always go and read it so that we we conserve time hallelujah so rise above competitive jealousy for scripture reference proverbs 14 30 proverbs 27 and verse 4 all right he said wrath is cruel and anger is outrageous but who is able to stand before envy envy is that dangerous 
Number two, avoid evil speaking and backbiting. You want to maintain all relationships, but especially destiny relationships. Avoid evil speaking and avoid backbiting. Write for reference Proverbs chapter 6 from verse 16 to 19. The Bible talks about six things that the Lord hates. A heart that devises evil, one that sows the seed of discord. All of these things God hates. Proverbs 6, 16 to 19. Another scripture. Romans 16 and verse 17. Romans 16 and verse 17. Romans 16 and verse 17. He said, now I beseech you, brethren, mark them which cause divisions and offenses contrary to the doctrine which we have learned and avoid them. Is it in your Bible? So when you become one who is given to evil speaking and backbiting, the Bible says to avoid you. It may be the reason why some of us don't have friends. There is no lasting relationship in your life. The lifespan of any relationship in your life is two weeks after two weeks you've gone to say something to tear down people and they say no 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 this person the next time another person wants to come they will advise that person and say be careful with this lady be careful with this gentleman yes he prays in tongues but he can tear you with envy and tear you down with evil speaking i forbid that over your life in the name of jesus titus chapter 3 and verse 2 Avoid evil speaking. Avoid backbiting. Titus chapter 3 and verse 2. The Bible says to speak evil of no man and to be no brawlers, but only provoked and it thinketh no evil. Rise above offense. Number 4. Am I right on that? The fourth key if you want to maintain strategic destiny relationships practice forgiveness and tolerance write it down please practice forgiveness and tolerance a man and his wife one time were quarreling they had a misunderstanding they were about 12 13 years in marriage and when they met the counselor the woman was crying and she said from the day she got married she had never found joy that she's never been happy and the man looked with shock on his face and said so all the laughter and the joy the trips the travels what happened that you're saying you've never been happy and the counselor told them he said that's how women talk she doesn't mean what she's saying. She just means I am offended right now. And the way she interpreted her offense is to say from the day I got married, I've never found joy and peace in this house. And the man stood there shocked, wondering all the birthday gifts, anniversaries, travels, and all the time she said you are the best thing that happened to me. What suddenly changed that you're saying from the day you got married? <laughs> I said that to teach you the difference between forgiveness and tolerance. Let me teach you the difference between forgiveness and tolerance. Forgiveness means to pardon a default. When you forgive, you bring pardon to an individual because of a default. But when you tolerate, you create a system of accommodation to manage a limitation that will happen again and again and again. Are you seeing the difference now? You need both forgiveness and tolerance. Remember how many times we go to God and say, Lord, just bless me and I will never disturb you again. God is not forgiving you. He has tol he's tolerating you because he knows you are coming back again for sure. <laughs> I 
Look at me. The reason why many of you are giving yourself heart attack over relationships, all kinds of relationships, is because you do not know that you need both forgiveness and tolerance. If you keep forgiving what you should tolerate, you will cry every day. I repeat, if you keep forgiving what you should tolerate, you will cry every day. A talkative will always be a talkative. An introverted person will always be an introverted person. It's as simple as that. If a talkative tells you, forgive me, I was under pressure, I won't talk again. If you forgive the person, you are not wise. You need to tolerate. Because five minutes later, the person will say, don't think I, I meant what I said. I was talking like that because... <laughs> Practice forgiveness and tolerance. Are you seeing now that the person you are sitting close to, some of you, you need to forgive them. For others, you need to tolerate them. Let me give you two scriptures. Mark 11 and verse 25. Mark 11 and verse 25. Then I'll give you Colossians chapter 3 from verse 12 and 13. The Bible says, and when ye stand praying, forgive. If ye have ought against any, that your Father also which is in heaven will forgive your trespasses. You must learn to forgive. Colossians chapter 3, from verse 12 and 13. Colossians 3, 12 and 13. The Bible says, put on therefore as the elect of God, bowels of mercy, kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness, long suffering next verse forbearing one another that's the word there forbearing one another and forgiving one another you see they are not the same if any man have a quarrel against any even as christ forgave you so also do ye it's very very important you must learn forgiveness and you must learn tolerance let me give you the remaining two Number, is that five? What is the fifth key to maintaining strategic destiny relationships? Write this down. You must be an active contributor to the growth of the other party or the parties involved. You must be an active contributor to the growth of the other party or the parties involved. You must be an active contributor to the growth of the other party or the parties involved in Acts chapter 20 and verse 35 very popular scripture the Bible says there that it is more blessed to give than to receive there are many people whose relationship is called parasitic relationships they are users they are takers they are not interested in giving anything the day they call you is because they have a need the day they come to your house is because they have trouble and they have exhausted all their options can i tell you this nobody will be indefinitely committed to you if they know that you are just a user and a taker the world does not embrace and celebrate users. You must be an active contributor to that relationship. Now please look up. Even our relationship with our precious Jesus. It looks like we are serving him and just serving him until you see what he has given us and he continues to give us. The breath that we have. The life that we enjoy. The health. The favor all of these great things when we begin to count our blessings and to name them one by one the hymn writer says it will surprise us what the Lord has done are we together let me tell you this never commit yourself indefinitely to any relationship that does not actively contribute to your growth the contribution is mutual. It is dangerous to be the only one giving the prayer. The only one giving the money. They are giving the support. Giving everything. 
and the other party all they are doing is just to be taken no it's a dangerous kind of relationship i used to have these interesting people because by the privilege of god's grace i try and do my best to be there for as many people um and there are all these people who is when they need help you just get a text calvary greetings apostle in the name of jesus christ it's been a long time i've not kept in touch that text is following the real text coming now then they say sorry just to let you know that in my rent we have come again i hope you are not angry for one year they don't care how you are whether you woke up whether you cried whether you laughed that's none of their business the moment there is a need here they come again there are some of you you are like that as you are looking at me even your biological parents you don't send them a text to say god bless you but when there is a need when you have a bad dream something is pursuing you you are coming from your village all of a sudden you call somebody and say sorry um it's been a while did you say you have a conference somewhere can i tell you this nobody becomes indefinitely committed to you if you don't pay attention to people relationships are investments is fraud to want a return over an investment you did not make let me tell you sincerely and i say this by god as busy as i may seem to be there are people whose call i cannot ignore because of the level and the extent of investments they have made in my life there are people today when i call no matter what they are doing they will stop and pay attention to it because of the level of investment i've made in their lives now let me tell you the mistake with our world don't want to sit in a position of intimacy over a relationship you did not invest in they met jesus and the mother of james and john said can you grant that my sons will sit at your left and right jesus said the space is available but there is a condition can you drink of my cup and be baptized with my baptism there are people today even if i wake them by 2 a.m and i tell them listen i'm stranded at the road they will get up and drive to come and pick me not because i'm a man of god let me assure you every relationship does not hold the same value there are relationships that many there are people who can give up anything for certain relationships i've had the honor and the privilege of meeting many of our fathers of faith i am amazed that as busy as they are there are strategic relationships that regardless their schedules they will invest in with joy and with honor don't expect me to give you the same attention with someone who thinks i am valuable to him or her it can't be the same way we're wrapping up let me have two people I want to teach you something powerful god bless you my friend you stand here just stand turn face the crowd my friend stand here now watch this if this gentleman cares about me so much are we together now that every time i meet him maybe he's holding a bottle of water and saying apostle take you may need this to quench your thirst and every time he's saying how are you how is your health how is your body everything that involves my life is interested in it you cannot expect me to be committed to this man the same way i will be committed to someone who maybe one day only when he has a need and he will send a text and say apostle bless you can you speak over my life today is my birthday i will speak god bless you god add years and wisdom and life to your years in jesus name amen but for this man if he tells me apostle i have headache i will buy him a pharmacy not a drug is, is someone getting it now why because he has placed value on my life and my destiny i can see how my life has advanced because of his contribution i will not ignore him Please hear me. 
next time you see men of God or your lecturers pay attention to certain people within the boundaries of purity now I'm teaching you this that when you see people pay attention to certain people more than others don't get jealous find out the investment and the contributions they have made when I was thirsty you didn't bring me water to drink there are people today I have blessed them generally I have not made any significant personal investment in their lives I would be stupid to expect them to give me such attention I can't demand that because I've not made the requisite level of investment now look up please you can be this man who pays attention to the people that matter to your destiny or you can be this man who does not care about anyone but wants to claim a stake in people's success the moment people succeed you say remember i prayed for you in the secret let god who sees you in the secret reward you there but since i did not see you for sure you will not get anything from me is someone learning This man you see, come Pastor Sam. I will tell you one of the reasons why almost every year I think without fail I come here. For many people they wonder, they wonder why is it? Number one, because I love Jesus. Number one, because I sincerely love your general overseer and the entire leadership and the ministry. I believe in what God is doing. But listen, in addition to that, you see this man here this man has mastered the art of investing in honor now i'm not talking of human worship no there are people what they are demanding for is human worship that is nonsense you see that every time you show people that you place value on them there are people who have come for me to pray for them I just laid hands and said god bless you even me i know nothing left me to them i just wanted them to give me chance to enter the car so i can go because the attitude they came with i know that no matter how i pray nothing will leave me to them and i'm not talking of kneeling down you can kneel down and still be standing could it be that this is why some of you have not received from the grace that is upon this vision and upon this ministry because everybody is the same to you it doesn't matter which speaker comes to preach you just look at them you can see old people like our parents here come to talk to you and you look at you are just laughing let me edit what they are saying i'm not sure they know what they are saying and it's not like you have any results most people who don't have results are the ones who sit down to assess the works of people who are producing results when I stand before great people, I stand like a sponge with my heart open to receive. Yes, I'm a Berean, but I humble myself to listen and to learn. We are going to pray. You can be this man, ready to discern the relationships that are very important and strategic. You can be this man, ready to trivialize everybody, including Jesus Christ. What is there? He's the king of kings. Did I ask him to die? He said, no, I've given my life to him. If he can't make the, there are other people. There are people like that. Nothing is ever worth your attention in life. I want you to learn a lesson from this, your leader. Learn a lesson from him. Humility and honor does not reduce you. In fact, it multiplies you. I'm saying this because may God have mercy on us so that we don't become a very proud generation that 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 tries to show glamour over nothing it is said that the empty gong makes the loudest noise you know great people 
by their humility to honor the investment of God over others and their willingness to learn and to receive this may be a hard teaching but you will thank me for it and you will thank your leaders for it you will go back to your various stations and the difference will be clear between you and other people in one week you will see that strategic people have gravitated towards your life and your life begins to move from one level to the other hallelujah god bless you sir please all rise let's rise up what's that so you're following number six what is the sixth key to maintaining destiny relationships practice genuine love practice genuine love let me tell you something i remember a few years ago maybe like four or five years a gentleman called me and was crying and was crying and was crying true story what happened the gentleman said i'm not lazy apostle my final result just came out and i did very well but i had one single course and it was a second semester course he said and where will i get the money me that i was happy that at least i would rest you know I've, i my mother has been waiting to just hear that my final result and he cried and cried and he said well he did not even call me to pray for him maybe for a waiver or whatever it is he just said please i should pray for him that god will help the mother understand and then number two that god will open doors of favor but he said he believed that he did that exam well and i said really so true story i asked the person i said which school is that which university and he mentioned the name i said which faculty when he mentioned the name i said are you a serious student he said yes this and that and that and i told him i said all right may god bless you whatever happens call me true story little did the gentleman know that I had prayed for someone in their faculty not too long and I called the person I said please I sat for the text the man sent to me to thank me and when I found it I said please sir I know you respect God and you respect me there is something I want to ask you for sir, my apostle what is it and I said there is this gentleman who called me so 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 and so is the name and the man asked a few questions and i told him i said there is a cause please i'm not saying you people should go and compromise on standards but maybe you may need to look into this for this gentleman he cried and i truly understand his situation and the man kept quiet true story he kept quiet for about a few seconds and he said hmm. he said it is well he said no problem i'll get back to you about three or four days later I received a text around 2 a.m. This guy saying he can't believe it. God is a miracle worker. God is a this. God can wipe the tears of people. That can I imagine? Uh, they, I think they gave their, them permission and said if it is a departmental course or something like that, they can waive it. And that they called him and the person told him that he would not tell him who said this, but they should pray. And the person was saying, Apostle, I don't know who God. And I kept quiet. When he finished, I told him, I said, make sure when God lifts you, you do the same for others and the gentleman went can i tell you every blessing comes from god through men delay comes from satan through men to men one man who should sign for your promotion can say your father offended me you will remain here and the person will sit on it and you will remain there as if god is not answering your prayer can i tell you when god says yes and men say no yes remains in the realm of the spirit it will take both god and men to say yes for yes to manifest here rise up on your feet let me give you two scriptures proverbs 10 and verse 12 talks about love and i believe it talks about a friend hatred
stirred up strife but he said love covered all sins john eleven thirty five, 35 popular scripture by this shall all men know john is it 11 please look for it for me by this shall all men know that ye are my disciples when you have love one to another can someone find that scripture for me i think i made a mistake here in my text by this shall all men know someone search it for me please ah huh? john 15 who has found it john john 13 okay 13 35 i wrote 11 here my apologies john 13 35 let's read it together finally before we pray by this shall all men know that ye are my disciples now everybody stand please thank you for your patience i'm about to give you an instruction right now and then we'll pray please everyone stand because your life is about to change hallelujah now listen please listen carefully there are four expressions i learned in my life that worked wonders in my life as far as relationships are concerned number one please write it down that word please is a miracle word it can open doors for you even if it's demons that close the door please is a statement that shows that you have value on people and you show courtesy please number two i am sorry these are miracle expressions that have worked wonders in the lives of great leaders please write it down please number one and then number two i am sorry don't say sorry who is sorry every time you say i am sorry you demonstrate maturity you demonstrate responsibility and you bring people to a point where they remember again that you are human i am sorry means i can be better than i was yesterday number three god bless you write it down please god bless you these are miracle expressions that i have lived with in my own life and i can tell you the wonder they have worked in my life god bless you you know what it means to say god bless you it means i use the authority that i have as a believer to declare unto you that you are empowered to advance or empowered to succeed now the last word has been abused or the last expression nevertheless we are believers it is a very powerful one it's called i love you unfortunately our world has polluted destroyed and whatever it is if you tell somebody i love you the person will ask you later were you serious when you are saying something that is supposed to be i won't ask you to use that one now <laughs> But for the purpose of this discussion, the first three